Okay, first of all, uh, last week I realized as I was searching on those that list of uh, things that I read, I, there was one that I didn't read, which is perfect because it falls right into exactly where we're going to start. And it's also, again, the concept that I'm trying to constantly bring forward so that you understand and relate it to a perception of Nichiren, and of the object of devotion mm -hmm. and of this concept of Buddha of beginningless time uh, based on Jiyush and Kuan Ganjo. So, um, or Kuan, Kuan Ganjo no Jiyush. So, I'm going to start by reading the dictionary definition of the Buddha of beginningless time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, Buddha of beginningless time, also eternal Buddha, original Buddha, or true Buddha. Okay? Everybody understands what I just said? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So don't forget, I already said we're all true Buddhists, right? So you see that. You see the point here. Also, eternal Buddha, original Buddha, or true Buddha. The Buddha who has been eternally endowed with the three bodies. The Dharma body, the reward body, and the manifested body, thereby embodying, thereby embodying the eternal law or ultimate uh, truth of life and the universe. This term appeared in Nichiren's writing given to his successor, uh, Nico, titled On the Mystic Principle of the True Cause. It refers to the mystic law, uncreated and eternal, of the Buddha of beginningless time, and that's in quotation marks from that Gosho, and states that the mystic law lies in the depths of the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. Nichikan, the 26th chief priest of the Taisekiji Temple, identified Nichiren as that Buddha based on the fact that Nichiren was the first to spread the mystic law. According to Nichiren, the Japanese term Jijuyushi literally means the body that is freely received and used. The Buddha of beginningless time is also called the Buddha of limitless joy, indicating the Buddha who de freely de uh, derives boundless joy from the law while enjoying absolute freedom and who directly expounds the law that he realized within his own life. In the lifespan chapter, Shakyamuni revealed his attainment of Buddhahood, numberless major world system, dust particle kalpas in the past. No matter how far in the past, however, it occurred at a fixed point in time and therefore is not eternal. Moreover, he did not clarify the law or cause that enabled him to attain enlightenment at that time. In contrast, the Buddha of, be of beginningless time is eternal and also represents eternal life endowed with both the nine worlds and Buddhahood, life itself, right? Mm -hmm. the, in the opening of the eyes, Nichiren states, this is the doctrine of original cause and original effect. It reveals that the nine worlds are all present in beginningless Buddhahood and that Buddhahood is inherent in the beginningless nine worlds, the beginningless nine worlds. Okay, so existence is not something that's created. This is the mutual possession of the ten worlds, the true hundred worlds and thousand factors, the true three thousand realms in a single moment of life. The, th the true three thousand realms in a single moment of life. Because this contains actual Ishin and Sanzen. Here, original, because it contains Nam Yoho Rengekyo. Do you understand? Here, original cause refers to the beginningless nine worlds and original effect to beginningless Buddhahood. Do you understand? Original cause. Here, original cause refers to the beginningless nine worlds. It's not like Buddhahood gave rise to us. Do you understand? And original effect to beginningless Buddhahood. They've never been separated. All right? What Nichiren defined as the true 3,000 realms of a, in a single moment of life is the original state of life. You understand? Okay. What is the original state of life? Nam myoho renge kyo To manifest this state of life is the attainment of Buddhahood for all people. That's what the original teacher did. Do you understand? Manifested that state of life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's what creates the entity of the law that we uh, communicate with directly when we face the Gohonzon with sincere faith. Mm -hmm. right? Nichiren established the practice that enables everyone to achieve this by inscribing the Gohonzon or the object of devotion that embodies this original state of life. 
and prescribing the invocation of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Right? Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Everybody understands the definition of the Buddha of beginningless joy? Mm -hmm. uh, pardon me, the Buddha of beginningless time. So, Buddha of beginningless time is always the Buddha of Kuanganjo. Everything other than the Buddha of Kuanganjo is, the, is, is pertaining either as an original disciple of that original teacher or something to do with the Buddhas and the harvest as an expedient means. Do you understand? Um, let me get into this. This will, make, this will help me make my point. Go ahead. So can we say attend Buddha who, which means attend our original state? Absolutely. And the, the clarity to perceive it. And the original state is, is already there. It's is not it? created. Right, not yeah. created. <clears throat> and it's not a, a goal to attain. No, not a goal to attain. It's something to bring forth. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> Don't forget, what's, what's the difference between, this is kind of what we read into last week. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the six basic paths, or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. them, six lower worlds, transmigration in the yeah. six lower mm -hmm. worlds, mm -hmm. and transmigration in the four higher worlds. Yeah. What's the difference between those six and the top four? Um. The Buddha vehicle. Mm -hmm. The Buddha vehicle. Because seven, eight, nine, and ten are all the Buddha vehicle. Ten is the Buddha vehicle, and the other three are the Buddha vehicle broken into expedient means so that they could proceed prior to the capacity of ten being developed in one's life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It's like theoretical each and sense yeah. and actual each and mm -hmm. Okay? So, understand then that what's the difference? So that we're talking about all common mortals being mm -hmm. the same with the exception that some dwell in a realm of delusion mm -hmm. and some r dwell in a realm of Buddha. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, you're on the path. Mm -hmm. Ten you're already, is, is already contained mm -hmm. to the other nine. So let's get to um, the beginning of chapter three here. And this is one of my, like I said, this is one of my favorite parts of the Go Show because I got it the first time I read it. It was a major thing. It was like, a, aha! I get it. When? Oh, God, 40 years ago. Oh. First time I read this. You keep polishing, huh? One must continue to polish, or the jewel is not worth as much. You never achieve its maximum value, its true value. Okay. Chapter 3, on page 33. Original cause and original effect. Everybody's with me on this title, because this is what we talked about last week, is yeah. to perceive this, right? Original cause and original effect. Eternal Buddhahood and, unen and the unending Bodhisattva way are opened through faith. So did you understand what he just said there in that title? No, because you're not paying attention. Now pay attention. Original cause and original effect slash eternal Buddhahood and the unending Bodhisattva way are open through faith. Yeah, what he's saying though, original cause is original cause is eternal Buddhahood. Okay? Mm -hmm. And original effect is the unending Bodhisattva way open through faith. Because what occurs when you're a Bodhisattva of the earth? You manifest in the latter day so that you can encounter the true teacher and the true teaching in each lifetime. Okay? That's where you make your advent. You always make your advent after the truth has already been revealed. You're a, you're a truth revealer. You're a truth supporter. You're a seed planter. You're an original disciple of the original teacher. That means there's no separation between you and the original teacher. You're a manifestation in it to an extent. Mm -hmm. of the original teacher. Yes. Okay? So what's that mean you're going to do in each Okay, now we've attained we've attained Buddhahood in this lifetime, okay? We we we've, we've now entered the realm of instead of like not the first six ways of transmigration, not the last the second three ways of transmigration, we've entered the realm of transmigration in the realm of birth and death in the realm of Buddhahood. Okay? Right? 
Now, what's going to happen once we've achieved that? Every lifetime, we're going to be born, meet the correct teacher, the correct teaching, and attain enlightenment. Right? Now, are we going to be born that way? No. No. So what's going to happen in every lifetime leading to that Buddhahood? <clears throat> we're going to follow the path of the Bodhisattva. Yeah. Okay? Now, we're original disciples of the original teacher as Bodhisattvas of the earth, correct? That's why we've taken this vow and we've got this... This, this sense of destiny and mission that we've taken on in our lives, right? Supposedly. Supposedly. I mean, that's the correctly, that's the way it should be being viewed. All right? So the, uh, the truth is, is that you're, you've been a bodhisattva in all of your existences, right? Yeah. Has there ever been a, an existence where you were not a bodhisattva of the earth? No, Not really. General. Not really, because the potentiality was always there, whether it had been awakened or not. It's part of... Buddhahood, right? Right. Okay, so, original cause and original effect, the title, eternal Buddhahood, our original state, and the unending Bodhisattva way, the manner in which we express it in each and every lifetime, are opened through faith. Faith is what reveals this capacity within our lives and also triggers its continuum and its continuation lifetime after lifetime. Lifetime after lifetime, it's faith that creates the opening that allows us, as bodhisattvas of the earth, to achieve each and sensen. Okay? Actual each and sensen. Everybody's with me? Yes. Going to the text of the opening of the eyes on page 33. All the other sutras, such as the flower garland, wisdom, and mehevrachana, not only conceal the fact that people of the two vehicles can attain Buddhahood, but they also fail to make clear that the Buddha attained enlightenment, countless kalpas in the past. What's that saying? What's he talking about there as he's qualifying this in his opening of the eyes letter? He's saying all the other sutras outside of the Lotus Sutra, okay, mm -hmm. such as the Flower Garland, Wisdom, and Mahavrachana Sutras, okay, not only conceal the fact that people of the two vehicles can attain Buddhahood, why do they, how do they conceal the fact that the people of the two vehicles can attain Buddhahood? Mm -hmm. By saying that they can't, mm -hmm. okay? Because all other sutras say that the people of the two vehicles cannot attain Buddhahood, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. But they also fail to make clear that the Buddha attained enlightenment countless kalpas in the past. Where in the other teachings prior to the Lotus Sutra is it stated that, the, uh, that Shakyamuni attained Buddhahood uh, any other time prior to being under the Bodhi tree? What, Catherine? Nothing. No other sutra, the Lotus Sutra, right? Exactly. Yeah. No place but this lifespan chapter when he says, hey, dudes. I didn't just attain Buddhahood under the Bodhi tree 40 years ago. It's been major, major, num numberless major world system dust particle kalpas since I, in fact, attained Buddha. That's what his pronouncement is. That's what he's talking about here, right? So he's saying the flaws in those other sutras are that they don't express the fact that the people of the two vehicles can attain Buddhahood and the fact that um, the Buddha attained uh, uh, enlightenment, uh, countless kalpas in the past. These sutras have two flaws. First, they teach that the ten worlds are separate from one another. They fail to move beyond the provisional doctrines and to reveal the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life as it is expounded in the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra. What's that say? What is the significance of the theoretical 3,000 realms in a single moment of life that's expressed in... Uh, the, the second chapter in the expedient means chapter. All people attain, can attain Buddhahood. All people have the, p the potential for Buddhahood. All people are Buddhists, theoretically. Okay? Second, because they teach that Shakyamuni Buddha attained enlightenment for the first time in this world, referring only to his provisional aspect, they fail to reveal the facts stressed in the essential teaching that the Buddha attained uh, enlightenment countless kalpas ago. Now, once again, if you did not read and ascribe to the Lotus Sutra as the teaching for the purpose of your attainment of enlightenment, you would never, ever have some sense that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment outside of the Bodhi tree. The only place that it talks about that, 
There's in the Lotus Nirvana set of, uh, of, of uh, scriptures. Okay, in the perfect teaching of the Lotus Nirvana. Okay, who named it the perfect teaching? Lotus and Nirvana, Tiantai. So unless you're already of a Lotus Sutra from Nagarjuna, Nagarjuna on, okay, you're not in that lineage, you're not perceiving the Lotus Sutra as a teaching to go check out and find out what it says. Do you understand? So out of ignorance, these people in the Flower Garland Sutra, the Mahavrachana Sutra, which is true word, right? Mm. They're all thinking that they have a correct teaching when they don't, and he's pointing out why they don't have a correct teaching. Okay? They don't have these aspects of the Buddha's teaching as it's expressed in the Lotus Sutra contained within them. Therefore, they lead to confusion, error, and they are incorrect. All right? So let me read that through quickly without stopping. All the other sutras, such as the Flower Garland Wisdom and Mahavrachana Sutra, not only conceal the fact that people of the two vehicles can attain Buddhahood, but they also fail to make clear that the Buddha attained countless enlightenment, countless kalpas in the past. These sutras have two flaws. First, they teach that the ten worlds are separate from one another, as we discussed last week, mm -hmm. right? We understand the ten worlds as they were expressed by Tentai, mm -hmm. as Tentai express them from the Lotus Sutra. Don't forget the ten worlds are taken from the ten factors. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're all from that expedient means chapter. That whole 3,000 realms issue is from the expedient means chapter. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't exist outside the teachings of Tentai, other than the fact that the people of the Lotus, uh, of the Flower Garland and the, and the True Word stole it and stuck it in but they stuck it in in a way that it didn't fit with the rest of their teaching because they didn't understand it. It wasn't their teaching in the first place. Okay, so he's going to say, these sutras have two flaws. Okay, so even though they stole this from Tintai and stuck it in there, they still have two flaws because the way they talk about the ten worlds are that he's talking about specifically true word and, 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 and flower garland, right? Yeah. The two schools that stole each and in yeah. All right? And so what he's saying is, that they, but they still have two problems. Because even though they stole each and Sanzen, which is from the second chapter, they didn't take from the 16th chapter the lifespan of the thus come one showing that he attained Buddhahood countless major world system dust particle kalpas ago, not under the Bodhi tree. They leave the rest of their teaching intact. The rest of their teaching says that he attained Buddhahood under the Bodhi tree. The Daishonin is saying is that's, not, that's not correct. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He's saying those are, even though they copied each and sons, and this is where they have their flaws. They keep the ten worlds separate. They don't reveal that the Buddha attained uh, enlightenment, major, uh, numberless major world system, dust particle kalpas ago. These sutras have two flaws. These sutras, the flower garland and Mahavrachana. First, they, because they teach that the ten worlds are separate from one another, they fail to move beyond provisional doctrines and to reveal the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life as it, ex as it expounded in the second chapter. Do you understand? Which isn't true each and in Sanza, but at least it's a theoretical framework for everybody being able to attain Buddhahood in their present form, right? Because it's got mutual possession of the 10 worlds even in that, three, that, that yeah. theoretical. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It's only on the basis of the mutual possession of the 10 worlds in the, three th in the theoretical 3,000 realms in a single moment of life that one can attain Buddhahood in their present form because there's no teaching like that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. All right, so second, because they teach that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment for the first time in this world, referring only to his provisional aspect, they fail to reveal the facts stressed in the essential te teaching that the Buddha attained count, uh, enlightenment countless kalpas in the past. Countless kalpas ago. These two great doctrines are the core of the Buddha's lifetime of teachings and the very heart and marrow of all sutras. Why is that so significant about the persons of the two vehicles? Why is that like a core aspect? We, we, it's so important that we gotta save their butts. Why do we have to save their butts? Think it through. It's absolutely important that you understand this. They lead to, to what? The if they can't, then the it's the theoretical, yeah, the whole theoretical explanation is out the, out the, out the window. Mm -hmm. They have to be accounted for, okay? Mm -hmm. We can get to women, we can get to Ichkantikas later, but right now we're talking about the ten worlds, right? Mm -hmm. So the ten world people, everybody represented by those aspects of life, 
okay, have to be accounted for in a perfect teaching. Everybody's with me? Yes. All right, so the expedient means chapter, which belongs to the theoretical teaching, expounds the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, making clear that persons of the two vehicles can achieve Buddhahood. It thus eliminates one of the two errors found in these earlier sutras. These are two, again, the provisional sutras that have each and sons in them because they stole it after the fact, all right? Mm -hmm. But it nevertheless retains the provisional aspect and fails to re uh, reveal the eternal aspect of the Buddha's enlightenment. What's he talking about there? I didn't see that Shakyamuni Buddha. Now he's, now he's talking about the theoretical, te the, the, the expedient means chapter. Mm -hmm. Now he's qualifying why there's still even a difference in the Lotus Sutra between the first 14 chapters and the second 14 chapters. Because even though in the first 14 chapters in the expedient means chapter, he's, this teaching of Ichin and Sansan has been qualified that allows everybody to be Buddhas. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's theoretical Ichin and Sansan. What allows a person to be a Buddha? Actual Ichin and Sansan, right? Where is actual Ichin and Sansan revealed? Only in the lifespan chapter. Do you understand now yeah. what he's saying and why he's saying it? So he's, he's actually counting the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra as being a provisional teaching. Because it doesn't lead to enlightenment. It doesn't contain the aspect necessary to reveal actual Ichin and Sanzen. It only theoretically says you could. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That's the extent of it, what it does. Mm -hmm. That's why Tentai had to do Makashikan and have threefold contemplation in a single mind. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? He had to go into a separate process of meditative practice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to try and get to an understanding of the middle way. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's really what Buddhahood is. Mm -hmm. is everything's the same. <clears throat> everything's equal. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So, the expedient means chapter, which belongs to the theoretical teaching, expounds the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, making clear that persons of the two vehicles can achieve Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. It thus eliminates one of the two errors found in the earlier sutras. But it nevertheless retains the provisional aspect and fails to reveal the eternal aspect of the Buddha's enlightenment. Thus, the true doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life remains unclear. It's not contained within the expedient means chapter. All right? And the expedient means chapter is revealing a 3,000 realms in a single moment of life that is not true. All right? It is not what we're trying to get to. That understanding is not what it's about. Understanding each and Sanzen is not the goal. That's theoretical. Living as the Buddha, manifesting the, the, the mutual possession of the ten worlds is the goal. So he says, and the attainment of Buddhahood, thus the true doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life remains unclear, and the attainment of Buddhahood by persons of the two vehicles is not properly affirmed. All right? As su such teachings are like the moon seen in the water or rootless plants that drift on the waves. This is my favorite part. This is the part that I got when I read it the first time. When we come to the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra, what's the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra? The last 14 chapters. Mm -hmm. Then the belief that Shakyamuni first obtained Buddhahood during his present lifetime is demolished. It's demolished. Why? Because, because he reveals, because even though I've never said anything all this time, it's been major it's been numberless major system dust particle kalpas ago. Yeah. Okay, that's what Maitreya's saying, where did all these dudes come from? He says, Oh, you thought I just attained Buddhahood under the Bodhi tree. No, dude, it's been a forever. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna go on for twice as long as the forever has already happened. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, what's he say there? Once the expedient means 
are eliminated because the essential teaching is revealed, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Then everything he said that pertained to him attaining Buddhahood under the Bodhi tree goes out the window. All of the Buddhas, all of the teachings, all of the everything, let me say it. And, and, and again, we're left with the Buddhism of the harvest really only being in truth according to Shakyamuni himself the last 14 chapters of the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. It really is, that's all that's left of it. And what it's really done is it is prepared the way for the Buddhism of the Sully in the latter day. All right? So, when, top of page 34, when we come to the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra, the last 14 chapters, then the belief that Shakyamuni first obtained Buddhahood during his present lifetime is demolished because he says it's been numberless major world system dust particle kalpas ago. And once he does that then, the effects of the four teachings are likewise demolished. Now what are the effects of the four teachings? What are the four teachings? The Tripitaka, the connecting, the specific, and the perfect, right? But the perfect, as he's talking about here, he's talking about the uh, first 14 chapters of the uh, Lotus Sutra. All right? That's what he's saying, the four teachings, the four, even the effect of the theoretical first 14 chapters of Lotus Sutra. They're all wiped out because the first 14 chapters are still written as though Shakyamuni attained Buddhahood in this lifetime for the first time. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right, so he's saying... Uh, are demolished and the effects of the four teachings are likewise demolished. When the effects of the four teachings are demolished, then the causes of the four teachings are likewise demolished. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You're saying the effects are all expedient means. Now the causes were all expedient means. Those didn't really occur. Thus the cause and effect of the ten worlds as expounded in the earlier sutras and the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra are wiped out and the cause and effect of the ten worlds in the essential teaching are revealed. Do you understand? All right. So he says, this is the doctrine of original cause and original effect. Do you understand what, they, what he's saying? The doctrine of original cause and original effect automatically disqualifies all the teachings that preceded the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Until the Lotus, the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra was, was preached, you could not attain this Buddhahood in your present form. A means to achieve that was not available to you. It didn't exist. Do you understand? Is everybody with me? Yes. This is the doctrine of original cause and original effect. The doctrine that all that other <coughs> stuff doesn't, is, was an expedient means and not real. It reveals that the nine worlds are all present in beginningless Buddhahood. What would be beginningless Buddhahood be? Buddhahood from Kuan Ganjo, right? Mm -hmm. Beginningless is Kuan, right? Mm -hmm. And that Buddhahood is inherent in the beginningless nine worlds. So he's saying the beginningless nine worlds also, mm -hmm. all right? This is the true mutual possession of the ten worlds, the true hundred worlds and thousand factors, the true three thousand realms in a single moment of life. This is actual Ishan and Sansa. Yeah. All right, now to go on with President Kata's lecture. Everybody was with me on that yeah. part of the Go Show. Mm -hmm. All right. In this passage, Nietzsche and Daishonin clarifies the original, the doctrine of original cause and original effect, the principle of attaining Buddhahood expounded in the lifespan, the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra. Specifically, original cause and original effect refer to the causality of Shakyamuni's attainment of enlightenment in the remote past as described in this chapter. Here, Shakyamuni reveals that his actual attainment dates back to a time in the immeasurably distant past numberless major system, uh, uh, world system dust particle kalpas ago. This is the first time he ever mentions numberless major system, uh, uh, major world system dust particle kalpas ago. Thus, the cause that made it possible for him to attain Buddhahood at that time, 
which he's revealed now for the very first time in, in 60 years of teaching, uh, is, yeah, is 50, whatever it was, uh, at that time is called original cause. All right. While the effect or result of his attaining Buddhahood is called original effect. Everybody's with me? That's from the Buddhism of the Harvest. In terms of the literal teaching of the lifespan chapter, which would be Buddhism of the Harvest, the principle of attaining Buddhahood based on this original cause and original effect is, expressed, is, is explained in the context of Shakyamuni. Everybody's with me, right? Yeah. Okay. But when viewed from the standpoint of the teaching implicit in the depths of the chapter, which would be the Buddhism, the sowing, mm -hmm. it, is not only, it is not limited solely to Shakyamuni. This doctrine also reveals the most fundamental and universal causality for attaining Buddhahood, and as such, it constitutes the cause and effect of enlightenment for all people. Now... But again, who qualified that difference between the literal interpretation and uh, the one that's um, implicit? Trick question. You're going to say Nietzsche, and it's not going to be right. It's Tintai. Tintai. So again, understand that this process of divining and qualifying this content of the Buddhism of the sowing occurred through the express activities of people that preceded Nichiren as well as Nichiren. Do you understand? Because Nichiren didn't build his Buddhism of the sowing, his teaching of the Buddhism of the sowing, on thin air. Mm -hmm. He based it on the doctrine that had already developed in the Mahayana uh, schools, okay, that, that, that expressed and understood this deeper meaning than the literal meaning. All right? But when I speak of the Buddhism of the Sewing, I'm specifically speaking of Nam Myoho Renge mm -hmm. not a clarification of the Buddhism of the harvest that occurred in the middle day of the law, which is what this is as far as, 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 far as Tentai is concerned. Do you understand? All right, so. Um, Two flaws, the two flaws of the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. In the above passage, Nichiren paraphrases the writings of the great teacher Myolo of China and takes up the subject of the two doctrinal flaws evident in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. So in other words, this argument actually is even preceding him as, a, as, a, as, a, as an argument. The first flaw is that they do not reveal the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life doctrine found in the theoretical teaching or first half of the Lotus Sutra. Their presentation of the ten worlds as separate from one another means that they divide Buddhist practices into stages and discriminate among certain types of people in terms of their capacity to attain Buddhahood. This discrimin discriminatory view is based on the belief that the ten worlds are separate and that the differences between them are fixed and unchanging. Because the position of the, th of the pre Lotus Sutra teachings is that of a virtually insurmountable chasm existing between the nine worlds and Buddhahood. They stress the need for countless kalpas of practice or insist that persons of the two vehicles, voice hearers and cause awakened ones, could never achieve enlightenment. These earlier sutras set forth provisional teachings such as, uh, pardon me, these earlier sutras set forth provisional teachings as expedient means, maintaining a rigid distinction or separation of each of the various ten worlds from one another and as a result, do not reveal the true teaching. That is why Nichiren says they fail to move beyond the provisional doctrines. In the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra, this view of separation is invalidated. The theoretical teaching emphasizes the attainment of Buddhahood by persons of the two, of ve of the two vehicles, set forth the principle of the true as uh, sets forth the principle of the true aspect of all phenomena and clarifies the 3,000 realm doctrines which teaches that all living beings in the nine worlds are endowed with Buddhahood and therefore have the potential to realize enlightenment. Everybody's with me? Mm -hmm. The second flaw of the pre-Lotus Sutra uh, teachings is that they conceal Shakyamuni's original attainment of Buddhahood in the remote past, which is described in the essential teaching or latter half of the Lotus Sutra. The earlier sutras teach that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment for the first time in this world and only after having carried out arduous practice 
over an immeasurably long series of previous existences. His enlightenment in this present lifetime is thus premised on the view that attaining Buddhahood necessitates countless kalpas of practice. At the heart of this perspective is the belief that the nine worlds and Buddhahood are separate, right? Because you've got to transmigrate and kind of like progress and go from one to the next over a course of many existences. You follow? Yes. The, the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra elucidates that all people have the potential to achieve enlightenment. It therefore avoids one of the two flaws of the other earlier sutras, but it still presumes that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment for the first time in his present life. Regarding this failure to disclose the truth of Shakyamuni's enlightenment in the remote past, Nietzsche says, the theoretical teaching nevertheless retains the provisional aspect and fails to reveal the eternal aspect of the Buddha's enlightenment. Thus, the true doctrine of the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life remains unclear, and the attainment of Buddhahood by persons of the two vehicles is not proper, properly affirmed. You all understand that now, right? What he was saying in the Gosho. Right? Discarding the provisional or transient aspect and revealing the true or eternal aspect means refuting the assumption that Shakyamuni first attained enlightenment in this world, his provisional identity as described in the earlier sutras, and the theoretical teaching, first 14 chapters, and illuminating his original enlightenment in the remote past, his true identity as described in the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching, that attainment of life uh, of enlightenment, uh, majorless, uh, dust, uh, majorless dust world, particle. yeah, world system dust particle kalpas ago. Nietzsche is saying that without revealing the Buddha's true identity, it is meaningless to expound the attainment of Buddhahood by persons of the two vehicles or the 3,000 realms doctrine, which elucidates that all living beings in the nine worlds are endowed with Buddhahood. Because the theoretical teaching retains a provisional aspect, it does not fully establish the former, nor does it elucidate the latter. Because the 3,000 realms doctrine sketched in the theoretical teaching lacks a solid basis and remains indefinite, Nietzsche compares it as the uh, moon seen in the water or rootless plants that drift on the waves. Everybody understands? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. the, eternal, the eternity of your life, the eternal aspect of your life is the essential essence of beginningless time. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing that I've always asked about Christianity even before I became a Buddhist. If you can go to heaven, how long is heaven? Heaven's forever. Okay, what about being born? Well, you were just born in this lifetime. I said, so I start from a point, but then I go on forever. That goes against all the physics. That goes against everything. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so God created me. Okay, when did God, oh, God's without beginning. Okay, so God's without beginning, all right? My death will be forever too, but somehow I'm kind of stuck in the middle as created. I never, ever, ever could get my head around that and have that seem reasonable to me. It just seemed completely illogical. How could you have infinity in one direction and not have infinity in, this, in the other? Of course, you do through the supernatural being, but that doesn't include everything. He created everything. What created him then? If everything else has a creator, that's why we have to have this supernatural being called God. Because mm. the, the answer is, well, then who created everything? And you say, well, who created God? And then the answer is, well, God has always been and shall always be. That's the beauty of this Buddhism. It's the same answer, but it makes sense. It says everything is that way doesn't qualify a supernatural entity as being that, okay? It's a process of causality that is endless, okay? That manifests in an endless reformation of fashion. Don't forget, all the atoms in our bodies were once what? Stars. Particles in the stars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? All the gold on earth came from somewhere else. All the water on earth came from somewhere else, okay? These are all aspects that we know to be true, but what else would make sense now? Only the Buddhist and the sewing as a foundational, as a philosophical foundation for those, those modern scientific realizations, understandings, proven facts, okay? So, casting off 
the transient and revealing the true and original cause and original effect. All right? This is, again, casting off the transient and revealing the true. What is that? For you, what is that? Right? Exactly. And what is another way of saying that? Actual each and insensate. Bringing forth actual each and insensate. Okay? Because you can theoretically realize it and understand it, and it's not actual. Okay. So casting off the transient and revealing the true is taking that theoretical aspect of Buddhahood and establishing true Buddhahood in your life. Okay? And the original cause and original effect are that true Buddhahood. Let's expand on, uh, on Nietzsche's impl uh, implication that the 3,000 realms doctrine remains unclear without the explanation of the true eternal aspect of the Buddha's enlightenment in the lifespan chapter. That is, without Shakyamuni's discarding as transient and revealing his true identity. The lifespan chapter's disclosure that Shakyamuni actually attained enlightenment in the remote past both refutes the Buddha's provisional aspect and elucidates the original cause and original effect of his actual enlightenment. Nietzsche says that by shattering the assumption, by shattering the assumption that Shakyamuni first achieved enlightenment in his present lifetime, the various effects of attaining Buddhahood described in the four teachings, that is, in the pre-Lotus Sutras and the, three, and the theoretical uh, teaching of the Lotus Sutra, are also demolished. Everybody's with me, right? Everybody understands that, right? This is all key, all right? He further states that when these effects, effects are annulled, the causes or practices for attaining Buddhahood described in the four teachings are also likewise invalidated. Are you with me? This is a huge declarative on the part of Nietzsche, because what's he saying? When I go out and I rail against true word and precepts and uh, nimbutsu and zen, there's a reason for it. Because none of them are valid teachings anymore. Period. They're all based on something that's been refuted in the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra as being real. Do you understand? Okay, so that's why it's so important. Okay, because this isn't just about what your belief set, this is about establishing why your belief set is correct. You can believe an incorrect belief set. This is the doctrinal foundation on why that belief set happens to be verifiable, defendable, uh, can defeat all others in, 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 in debate as it relates to doctrine. Um, okay, where am I? Okay, pardon me, let's just okay. go here. Last paragraph on 36, on first column. Mm -hmm. Nietzsche says that by shattering the assumption that Shakyamuni first achieved enlightenment in his present lifetime, the various effects of attaining Buddhahood described in the four teachings, that is, in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings and the theoretical teaching of the Lotus Sutra, are also demolished. He further states that when these effects are annulled, the causes or practices for attaining Buddhahood described in the four teachings are, are likewise invalidated. One purpose in casting off the transient and revealing the true is to completely refute the cause and effect of the ten worlds set forth in earlier sutras and the theoretical teachings so that they're not drawn back upon again incorrectly from an incorrect perspective. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So they, they, they're not poison because they're poison in that, in that form. Mm -hmm. All right? The cause and effect of the ten worlds and the cause and effect of attaining Buddhahood, while the nine worlds constitute the cause and the world of Buddhahood, the effect. Pardon me. The cause and effect of the ten worlds are the cause and effect of attaining Buddhahood, while the nine worlds constitute the cause and the world of a Buddhahood, the effect. The nine worlds are the mother and father. The lifespan chapter thus clarifies the original cause and original effect which represent the cause and effect of the ten worlds of the essential teaching. Do you understand? He's qualifying now. The, uh, the ten worlds of the essential teaching are the ten worlds of true Ichin and Sanzen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Of actual Ichin and Sanzen. That is the true cause and effect of attaining Buddhahood. This is what I was talking about last week. When we were talking about the ten worlds, you go hell hunger, 
you know, hell, hungry spirits, you know, anger, or pardon me, uh, 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 animality, animality asuras, and all the way up, okay? Mm -hmm. But what we really are talking about is bodhisattvas of the earth and true identity versus bodhisattva and Buddhahood. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is the true mm -hmm. ten worlds, all right? This is the reason why Shakyamuni cast off the transient and revealed the true. How are the original cause and original effect presented in terms of the literal teaching of the lifespan chapter? He says, okay, you want to know what we're really saying, what Shakyamuni was saying? First, Shakyamuni proclaims, it has been immeasurable, boundless, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, millions of Nayudas of Kalpas since I, in fact, attained Buddhahood. In this passage, the Buddha indicates he actually gained enlightenment in the incalculably remote past. He also states, since I attained Buddhahood, an extremely long period of time has passed. My lifespan is an immeasurable number of asamyak kalpas, and during that time I have constantly abided here without ever entering extinction. Shakyamuni explains that as the Buddha enlightened since the distant past, his life is ever abiding and eternal. This ever abiding and eternal state of life of Buddhahood is the effect of attaining enlightenment in the remote past, namely the original effect. Next, with regard to the original cause, Shakyamuni says, originally I practiced the Bodhisattva way. Did everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says, next, with regard to the cause, uh, to the original cause, Shakyamuni says, originally I practiced the Bodhisattva way, and the lifespan that I acquired then has yet to come to an end, uh, but uh, will last twice the number of years that have already passed. In other words, he says that the life state of Buddhahood, he obtained the original effect, and the life state of the nine worlds in which he practiced the Bodhisattva way to do so, the original cause, have endured endlessly throughout the numberless major world system dust particle kalpas in the past, he attained enlightenment. And he adds that they will continue to exist for a duration twice as long again. The life state of Buddhahood, original effect, is ever abiding and eternal. And the life state of the nine worlds in which one practices the Bodhisattva way, the original cause, is inexhaustible and never ending too. In this way, the causality for attainment, pardon me, in this way, the causality for enlightenment described in the essential teaching that is, the doctrine of original cause and original effect is dramatically different from the view in pre-Lotus Sutra teachings which asserts that Buddhahood can only be realized by eliminating life states of the nine worlds. Everybody with me? This is a complete departure in the Lotus Sutra, right? That's why it was never accepted and those other sutras rejected because it's a complete departure. Those other schools would have had to disband eliminate and, and abandon all of their traditions and take up something completely new mm -hmm. that was completely under the Nagarjuna Tintai kind of uh, lineage. Everybody's with me? Yes. In fact, the Lifespan chapter explains that the Buddha, even after becoming enlightened in the remote past, has ceaselessly pursued the Bodhisattva way out of a desire to liberate <coughs> from suffering those who dwell in the reality of the nine worlds. So what's he saying here? That the Buddha still always functions as a bodhisattva. Mm. Okay? Always. You don't go straight into Buddhahood. Bo Bo Bodha bodhisattvahood is, 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 is part of the expression of Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. Right? The Buddha vehicle is expressed in those three higher worlds of learning, realization, and compassion of bodhisattva. Right? They're not three or lower separate things. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. They're not separate stages. Mm -hmm. All right? They're the same as. They're components of. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. In fact, the lifespan chapter explains that the Buddha, even after becoming enlightened in the remote past, has ceaselessly pursued the Bodhisattva way out of his desire to liberate from suffering those who dwell in the reality of the nine worlds. Here the true aspect of the Buddha becomes clear through Shakyamuni in the lifespan chapter, casting off the transient and revealing the true. This true identity, if you will, is that of the eternal Buddha who embodies a way of life dedicated to never-ending bodhisattva practice. 
That's each of us as well. Do you understand? There's that aspect of your life that exists as your life. It is ever present in your life. It is never separate from your life. Do you understand? That's the part that makes you the same as the Gohonzon, or says that people say the Gohonzon is you. That's what they're alluding to. This is the aspect they're alluding to. The life state of unceasing devotion to Bodhisattva practice amid the reality of the nine worlds. What is that? That's us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The life state of unceasing devotion to Bodhisattva practice amid, amid the reality of the nine worlds is a life state of the nine worlds. At the same time, the eternal life state of Buddhahood provides the fundamental energy for manifesting this commitment to unending Bodhisattva practice, which is chanting Daimoku, which is studying, learning, realizing, and having compassion to propagate. Do you understand? Yeah. Am I going out of frame every time I do that? Should, I'll just move over a bit, or you could, whatever. In the earlier sutras, you had me move this way the first time, though. In the earlier sutras, it was assumed that Shakyamuni, who attained enlightenment for the first time in his present existence, would, upon death, be reborn in a pure land in some other world and cease carrying out bodhisattva practice in this mundane world. You all understand that, right? He'd go to a, one of the Buddha lands. But for the Buddha who originally attained enlightenment in the remote past, the mundane world is itself a pure land and a land of tranquil life. Everybody perceives that and understands that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have to go to some place that's an exclusive mm -hmm. club. We couldn't save anybody there. Mm -hmm. The bodhisattva part and component of our true identity would not be able to be revealed there. If I go to a Buddha land, I got nothing to share with anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody already knows it. From the perspective of this Buddha of the lifespan chapter, the reality of the nine worlds represents an opportunity to bring forth the eternal inner life force of Buddhahood, the original state. It also constitutes the arena for actualizing and expressing the wisdom and compassion of Buddhahood. So in other words, without our true existence of living in the nine worlds as common mortals, we would not have the capacity to speak, to move around, to interact with others to propagate this teaching, to show the compassion of the Buddha by sharing it with others and helping relieve their suffering. In addition, this Buddha regards those suffering amid the reality of the nine worlds as children to be, to be taken care of and led to happiness and as friends with whom to share the limitless freedom of the state of Buddhahood. Us in our daily lives trying to propagate Buddhism and selling, correct? Mm. All right. So, everybody's with me, right? Yeah. So he's talking about you. When he keeps saying, this Buddha, this Buddha, this Buddha. He's talking about you, that Buddha, mm -hmm. when you manifest that Buddha state. Mm -hmm. Do you follow? Yes. All right. The Buddha who has realized this true absolute freedom, which could be any of us, all right? Mm -hmm. If we have, if we've made the cause for that to occur... Mm -hmm exercises mastery over his body and mind through the power of Buddhahood and self-reliantly conquers all negativity and other devilish forces. That means when you're faced with obstacles, when doctors say shit, you don't just go, ooh. Okay? You suck it up as a challenge. Now, does that mean you're going to eternally live forever and that everything that threatens? No. But you will live a life that is an example of this life state. And you will be able to elucidate all the wisdom that you were supposed to in that life, in the lifetime that you manifested that lifetime for. Don't forget whose causes dictate how long you live. It's not a God or a Buddha that sent you on a mission. You made that determination, all right? Okay, so, at the same time, the Buddha recognizes that the power of Buddhahood also lies dormant within the lives of others and within the mundane world itself. Thus, in order to unlock and activate this latent power, he continually strives to awaken people to their Buddha nature. 
He does this by tirelessly pursuing courageous action, manifesting unlimited wisdom, and engaging in sincere dialogue. Everybody's with me, right? Yeah. You keep practicing to the last moment of your life, to the best of your ability. In this way, Shakyamuni, casting off the transient and revealing the truth, in the lifespan chapter, radically transforms earlier assumptions about the Buddha and about attaining Buddha. Everybody's with me on that, right? Mm -hmm. It pretty much rewrote the book there. It is to be pointed out, however, that the literal teaching of the lifespan chapter speaks primarily about the original effect of the Buddha who attained enlightenment in the remote past. Its only reference to the original cause is found in the passage, originally, I practiced the Bodhisattva way. All right, and since it's 9 o'clock, and that's a perfect spot to segue over, and next week will be, um, I'll get as far as I can. Uh, yeah. Next week we will start on page 38, the beginningless world, a uh, beginning, uh, pardon me, the beginningless world of Buddhahood and the beginningless nine worlds. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye bye.